members including Mr. Henry Quack, Mr. Chen Shou Mao and Ms. Antia Ong, they have voiced their concern about improving the retirement adequacy of caregivers. We recognise that some full-time caregivers may not have been able to work in their younger years. They may therefore not have much CPF savings for retirement. This is where <coughs> the Silver Support Scheme can come in. Silver Support Scheme supplements the retirement incomes of elderly Singaporeans who had low earnings throughout their lives and currently have little or no family support. In 2018, over 153,000 elderly persons received silver support payouts amounting to $335 million. For those with family members who can top up their CPF savings, the government has lowered the minimal threshold sum required to make it easier for CPF members to transfer their CPF savings to their spouses, to their parents and to their grandparents. This will enable more members to strengthen their retirement adequacy of their loved ones. And we are encouraged. We are encouraged by the positive response to this move. Last year, a total of 3,200 members benefited from CPF transfers from their spouses, while a total of about 2,800 members received CPF transfers from their children and their grandchildren. Associate Professor Walter Tessera made three suggestions. First, he proposed to strengthen silver support scheme. Second, he suggested topping up the CPF accounts of members with low contributions. Finally, he asked for the Lifetime Retirement Investment Scheme, LRIS, to be introduced soon. First, we are concerned about elderly who may not have enough retirement income. However, it is also important to place this in context. The vast majority of our elderly owned their own homes and have family support and personal savings to rely on. Attainment on BRS, basic retirement sum, has been improving steadily, with about 70% of active members being expected to attain BRS at the age of 55 by year 2020. For those with low incomes throughout their lives or little or no family support in retirement, we have, as I said earlier, silver support scheme to supplement their retirement incomes. And I want to assure Associate Professor Walter Tessera, we will review silver support scheme from time to time to ensure that it continues to provide meaningful support for this group of elderly. At the same time, we have to balance this with the need to ensure that the entire system remains fiscally sustainable in the long run. Second, we already supplement CPF contributions of the lower income via the Workfare Income Supplement Scheme, WIS. We have taken this approach because as a society, we want to encourage work and employment. And earlier on, we heard from many members that many of the seniors that you spoke to, they want to work for various reasons, financial independence, for passion, for purpose. I remember Mr. Patrick Tay spoke about the example that he mentioned, he want to work because it allows him to be physically and mentally sharp. So as a society, we embrace this and we have uplifted the wages of the lower income and kept employment high and then unemployment low. For those unable to help themselves for various reasons they can't work, we want to make sure the safety net is there to support them. We want to make sure that those who can't work and have no support, the government will provide for their basic needs and if necessary, give them the long-term support. And this is where the whole of government will have to step in. MOM, MSF, and you heard from SPS, Ms. Sun Xueling, MND as well. Third, CPF interest rates are already high compared to other market instruments on a risk-adjusted basis. I want to assure Associate Professor Walter Tassera that we are studying LRIS carefully. Now, however, developing an investment product, especially as you can see what happened in the last 10 years uh, with investment products, especially sophisticated ones, developing an investment product is a complex effort and we have to carefully balance the risk that's undertaken by our members. And our members have varying knowledge of what it takes to invest in, in a risk, uh, risky product. Now, so we want to balance the risk taken by the members and also the expected returns. Now, so I want, we want to assure Associate Pro Professor Walter Tessera that we certainly will update on LRIS in due course. So overall, 
we have a system that strikes a balance between adequacy in retirement, support for the low income seniors, especially those who have low balances in their account, uh, CPF account, and also longer term fiscal sustainability. And we have achieved good results in retirement adequacy with comparable replacement rates to other OECD countries. While we are constantly looking for ways to do better, we should build on what has been working well for Singapore and Singaporeans. Now, talking about CPF, we have also been going out there to get feedback from members, and we recognise that some people may find the different CPF schemes and requirements fairly mind-boggling. In 2015, we introduced a one-on-one -on -one personalised CPF retirement planning service, in short, CRPS, to help older workers better understand the various CPM schemes and make their plans before they turn 55 years old. Last year, we expanded CRPS to include options such as silver housing bonus, which lets the members unlock the value of their HDB flats and boost their retirement payouts. Now, this year, CRPS is available to those turning 65 years old. As Mr. Andrew Quack suggested earlier, we will also work with community partners to provide services that help older Singaporeans plan for their financial milestones and better prepare for retirement. 